Hello, I'm Joseph and this is my 2015 Subaru Outback where I have been camping in it part-time for the past two-ish years since I bought it about two years ago. I've done three big trips uh, in this vehicle. I drove across Canada about two years ago from Alberta to New Brunswick. I went to New York City over Christmas last year and I have also taken it to Labrador where I spent 10 days in the freezing cold where the car actually handled quite well. Last summer I also spent every weekend in the car camping in it in Nova Scotia. So this is my third vehicle to have converted. My first one was a Ford Freestar uh, minivan. My second one was a Honda Civic hatchback and now my Subaru Outback. So for car design, the design that I used to kind of build out this camper here, um, a while back a friend told me that if you're going to be building a vehicle, what you want to do is you want to take the percentage of time you're spending in each activity and you want to base every single activity off of a percentage of time that you're going to be doing it throughout your time in the vehicle. And so for example, we take sleeping, you should be sleeping eight hours a day, that's one third of a day or in this case, we'll just use a week's period because it's easier to do the math over a week um, for like those little activities such as like cooking where you might build a meal prep for a little bit longer. But anyhow, so we take sleeping over a week. You're going to be sleeping ideally one third of your time. So you put 33% to sleeping and then you list every single activity that you have to have. You have a list of mandatories and niceties. Then you take all your mandatories and the highest percentage is the one you start working on first. You build out there, design it perfectly so that way that is the most comfortable place in your vehicle. After that, everything else has to work around it. And what that there does is it allows the time that you spend in it to be the most comfortable possible. You really want it to be comfortable so that way you don't end up quitting over time. So I have a few different modes for my car. So I have my living mode, my driving mode, and then my empty mode. So kind of like right now it's just empty. I have all my stuff just sitting outside. But when I'm actually living in here, um, when I'm living in here, everything's in the driver's seat and the blinds are up. And then when I'm not living in here, everything's in the back on top of the bed. So every single night I have to adjust the car completely. So living as minimalistically as I can is normally the best for in here. So I'm gonna quick put in all the blinds and black out the vehicle. So that's all the blinds in right now. The next thing that I do for putting into camp mode is I level out the car. So I level out the car by just using the car jack and the car jack, uh, just put it underneath the little cargo box I have in the back and just jack it up until the bed's about level. So this does two things for my build. What it does is it keeps the car level and it also takes the pressure off the back springs. So this is now the inside of the car in what I would call house mode or living mode or sleeping mode. So for getting inside the car, what I have is a nice little seat right here. This seat here just gives me a nice little spot to sit down while I'm, before I get into bed. It gives me a spot to kind of just sit, relax, kind of use a desk if I need to. So this is the seat and then we've got the bed. As you can see, the bed is tall enough to fit a six foot um, tall person in and it goes right to the back of the seat here. The seat is as far back as it goes. Um, so it's nice and comfortable for a passenger if they were to be a passenger here to be able to sit plus having um, enough space from my head to go from here all the way to when the tailgate is closed. So I'll just quick jump into bed here real quick so you guys can see how much space there is. So 
so just closing the the trunk right now. And as you can see, I'm in bed, pretty comfortable. Body goes all the way down. Okay, so for the tour of the car where I go, I'm gonna go through the cabinets and um, that side of the house here. So what we got right in here, so we got just a nice little charging area. I get my cell phone charger in here. I got my watch charger. I get off charging ports for to put all my GoPros, everything else in if I need some um, 120 volt, um, everything. In here I also have my little thermostat where I can see the temperature of the outside and the inside. From here I've got my light dimmer and I also have my battery monitor, my heater, and my inverter charger, or yeah, inverter charger controller just for on off. Right now, I got this nice big 3000 watt inverter. We'll get into that there when I go through the electrical side of the house. Over here, I have my microwave, a little bit of a poor design. I didn't think of how thick I was gonna make my bed before I actually put the microwave in, so the door is a little tricky to get open. I gotta kind of move the sheets out of the way. In this angle here, we've got the microwave. It says down here, permanently built in. We've got the air fryer, which if I move my decoratives out of the way, it will actually be able to operate with the doors closed. And my induction cooktop. The induction cooktop fits either here, or I can also put it on top right here. Um, when I have it inside, I just don't cook anything greasy in it. So when you're sleeping inside a vehicle, it's a confined space and I learned this lesson the hard way um, on my first time when I was sleeping in my Civic in a very small space. Uh, I woke up halfway through the night and my lungs were really hurting um, and that's when I started realizing that when you exhale air, there's a lot of moisture in it. You increase the moisture content in the vehicle very, very quickly and it's really difficult to breathe. So that's where I started looking into how to get better airflow. So what I do for airflow here with uh, my summer setup is I have a little fan that goes in my sunroof. So that there looks like this. So all I have is just this little black piece of cardboard with some black uh, tape on it. I just slide it in and plug it in. And it has an on off switch. So it has the on off switch, so it's all good to go. And that's what it looks like up top. So if it's raining or bad weather, I just close the sunroof and have it opened up at the back and that there um, still allows it to get decent airflow through it. What I also do is I will open these back windows for in bad weather. I got this little, um, little rain shield and I'll just open up the window just a little bit so that way the water doesn't actually get into the vehicle, but I'll have both side windows open so that way it's sucking the air in from here, blowing it out the top. In the summer, when the bugs get really bad, don't mind all the mess here, I just cleaned out the car so that way we would be able to show the video. So in the summer, what I did was, we obviously have mosquitoes, so I have a, let me get this framed up nicely for it, so what I have was I took the screen, um, it's just a patio door screen, um, and I sewed it together in the shape of the in the shape of the door, and I put some little magnets on the end of it on the bottom, so it somewhat magnet uh, magnetically holds itself to the door, and it's good for either door because I got magnets on both sides, and you can still open your door open and closed, even with your screen on. So I just pull it tight, and popper closed now I have a screen no bugs get in magnet holds it down um, and it works pretty good I'm still have to build one more for the other side and then once I get to that there I'll have a nice airflow through the vehicle um, what I have it set up is so that way it sucks the air from the window across where my face would be and up out the top and what that there does is it keeps all that moisture going in a direction away from me out the window so I have the airflow going across where I'm sleeping. For heating in the winter, um, 
obviously I have to be able to stay warm. So what I have done is I have got it with a little diesel heater. What I did was I took my spare tire out of where the spare tire would normally go and I put it on the side of my little cargo box. And then in the bottom of where the spare tire goes, there is two little drain plugs. So those two little drain plugs now have my diesel exhaust coming out and if we come over and that's where I have my fresh air intake for the combustion chamber of the diesel heater. My fuel line is also goes through the cold side and same with all my electrical to run my pump. If I come back here, I actually have my diesel, the pump that pumps the fuel into the car. I got my filter and then my uh, case of our Jerry, bleh, my storage of diesel plus a spare Jerry for extra diesel. And also in here, I got a bunch of extra random stuff, uh, jumper cables, spare fuel. It's empty right now, but just in case, you know, WD-40, windshield washer fluid, my ex my outside temperature gauge for my thermometer that's inside. And so the heater is in where the spare tire would be. I'm not sure if we can see it, but you can kind of see right down in there. That's where my heater is. I also have a little access hatch where I can get to it from the top underneath my bed. What that there does is it pumps the hot air all the way to where it comes out right here by my seat. Also another one underneath the driver's seat. So that way when my feet are nice and wet from snow coming into the car, it will be drying out everything because it comes out right here. So it dries out everything around here, which forces the air to go and go through the car. So when we're running our fans, in a vehicle so when your vehicle's driving and you're pumping that warm air in if you don't have it on circulate what you're doing is you're pushing air into the car and that air has to escape somewhere otherwise your car is just going to keep inflating until it turns into a balloon and floats away but what they do is they have two little um uh one-way valves in the back of your car which allow the air to go and escape out through the back bumper so from there what they do is I took out that one-way valve and I have it so that when my diesel heater is actually sucking fresh air in through that um, little valve in the opposite way and it keeps fresh air coming into the vehicle. Then I'll have just a tiny little crack in one of the windows up in the front so that way it can actually have the air escape somewhere and I will have fresh air being circulated through with the air that I'm breathing in the winters at night. So this is my heat controller and it right now is on heat setting one so when i was just in labrador and it was negative 20 out i had to have on heat setting three heat setting three with the blinds all my thermal blinds in the windows with that there in it was able to keep the car at 20 degrees celsius the whole time um now i found that negative 20 was about where heat setting three was good um, negative 15 was when I only needed heat setting 2 just to keep the inside at 20 degrees. Um, at negative 10, that would be heat setting 1. In between negative 10 and negative 5, what I would do is I would pull open this halfway. What that did was with the glass here, it allowed the, it allowed the cold to come through the glass and to actually cool the car down a little bit because heat setting 1, I can't go lower than that. So it just allowed the car to stay a little bit cooler. And then from negative five to negative or to zero, I guess negative zero, same thing. Um, I would just pull it open all the way and that there would keep the car nice and cool instead of hot. After there, from like zero to five degrees, like at that point is just put another blanket on and let your body just keep um, the car warm at that point. Power system. Right now I have, and I will show you, I have two SOK uh, 600 or sorry 206 amp hour batteries. Um, two of them, one here, one right behind on the other side. And that's just right in the passenger side um, back seat. Um, then I took out the back seats and underneath my bed. So this is where the cushion of the back seat would normally be. That's where I have my 
fuses, my battery monitors, my shut off um, switch over there. I have a DC to DC charger right there. Uh, I've got a bus bar further up on the other side. And that's where I have, and that's how I power my whole system. So from this side here, we can see I've got my bus bar over here. This is where my all my wires are. The inverter recommended four aught wires, so I have super heavy duty wires. And right here is where I have my 3000 watt inverter. Um, the reason I got a 3000 watt inverter, uh, the inverter charger, is because I was planning on building out a van. Um, but right now, Ford's taking forever with how they are delivering vehicles to Canada. So I'm stuck waiting. So I'm just making the most of this car. So with this here, um, I do have all my air vent spots. There's one on the other side of this here, but there's enough space in back here for the air vent to actually be able to vent out both sides. So we don't need to worry about it overheating too much. So this sums up the tour of my car. I still don't have a name for my car yet. So if you wanna comment in the video or in the comments on a name that you think would be best for the car and eventually I will come up with a name for my Subaru. Anyhow, I'm gonna go explore the lake here a little bit more and that'll be about it for my day.